Hi guys, welcome to Ask the Doc. Uh, just wanted to give you an update on what the hell has been going on in my life and essentially uh, <clears throat> walk you through uh, what it's like being diagnosed with uh, COVID-19. Um, it's not shocking that I would have gotten this infection. I'm dealing with a bunch of patients in the ICU and our, our sick, uh, isolated uh, COVID patients in our hospital. Uh, that I wasn't surprised that I was going to get this, but um, I just want to kind of like elaborate on like what's going on and how uh, the life and uh, kind of like the, the the fabric or I guess basically the the so the, the breakdown of our family has happened uh, because of this. Um, as you guys can see right now, this is not the same scenario or the background of where I shoot usually my videos, which is out of my office in the hospital, uh, because I'm not able to return back to work. Um, I have to be on a seven-day hold. Uh, the criteria for our hospital is a seven-day hold in isolation, and we have to be 72 hours free uh, of a temperature excluding the use of Tylenol. They don't want you skewing the uh, numbers by taking too much Tylenol. And the third criteria uh, is asymptomatic. Fourth criteria is another physician follow-up note to release you back to work. So hopefully I everything goes well and I still stay fever-free. Um, the onset of my symptoms uh, was on April 11th. Didn't really think much of it. I went to do a morning run. However, this run was unusual. Uh, I felt more heavy in nature, as if I just ran a half marathon, but I only did, I think, four miles. So clearly something wasn't adding up in my body. And I decided to take my temps. Uh, nothing was really surprising out of that either. Uh, my temp was only 99.8, um, 99.7, uh, but I did have pretty profound body aches around my shoulders, my back, my knees were killing me, uh, my ankles were really just like super spaghetti-like. Uh, and this is usually a trend for me after I run 11, 12, 13 miles, not a, a regular three, four mile run. So this was unusual. Um, and then on April 12th, what really happened is it, it boom, smacks you. Uh, just a huge wave of heaviness to the body, super low energy fatigue. Uh, thankfully, I didn't drop my pulse ox. Um, I was essentially using a pulse ox monitor like this, uh, and it showed that all my readings were about 95 and above. Um, I would have gotten concerned if it was in the low 90s because uh, that means there's some real big pulmonary involvement occurring. But uh, yeah, I took my logs. I'm still taking logs of all my logs. Um, and I have a bunch of logs that I've been sending out to my infectious disease docs really to get a ball on what's going on. So going back uh, on April 12th, my, my temperatures we're actually getting higher and higher. Uh, the uh, the temp as high as 102 degrees. That occurred at nighttime around 4:30 uh, a.m. and I was basically sleeping in drenched sweat shirt, uh, just drenched. Uh, I was sleeping in shorts. I even took my shorts off to underwear, and uh, just feeling horribly run down like just a regular old uh, fever uh, like a viral uh, bug so because things weren't improving I, I put myself on azithromycin 500 milligrams daily that's a z-pack and currently I'm on day six of that I'm feeling much better the temperatures officially broke around uh, the uh, like on the 13th and I haven't had a temperature uh, uh, over 100 degrees now. 
I've had some low grades, some 99.5s, uh, but now I think like just looking at my temp logs, uh, even my heart rates have improved. Initially my heart rate was in the 120s, 130s. This has now dropped into the 90s, 70s, uh, and the temps now are hovering around 98.8, 98.6. So looks good, but you got to take a lot of meticulous notes with your temperatures. You got to take a, this thing records your heart rate, um, and uh, it also records your pulse ox. Thankfully, I, before I even got sick, uh, I think about three weeks before I got this, uh, because my daughter had pneumonia, and we had to check uh, her pulse ox, uh, and. Um, thankfully I had this because this thing goes for like almost uh, 150 bucks now uh, and you can barely get it on the market. Um, same thing with temperature gauges. So I'm using uh, this Smart Glow Exergen temp, it's a temporal temp uh, to record my readings and um, I'm recording uh, in the Radisson in uh, Marriott Hotel because I'm in current isolation from my own family so that I don't spread that risk to them. So just to let you know guys uh, that I'm doing better, um, pretty scary, uh, and I have a FaceTime a chat with my primary care doc on the 20th and uh, at that time he'll give me like a doctor's note to say that everything looks pretty okay uh, and hopefully I'll be back to work on the 20th uh, and help out my work family and my colleagues uh, that are really stretching themselves thin to cover for my my uh, my absence. But I um, want to appreciate and thank uh, um, all the people, especially my wife, that's been coming back and forth uh, with the kids and uh, help my appreciative of the uh, two infectious disease docs that have been basically a wealth of knowledge uh, in fighting this uh, and uh, entertaining random questions I had even if it was late in the day and um, uh, just go from there. Alright guys, uh, if you guys have any questions or anything related to this or other questions um, shoot up uh, the, the site, hit me up with a comment, uh, and um, be safe, wear your mask. My wife decided to make a cool little mask here. She's not the best uh, seamstress, but the thought counts. Um, I was having trouble with uh, breathing with the N95s. I think the N95s do too good of a job that you can't breathe well if you already have respiratory issues. Um, and it's just, it makes such a tight seal that I wanted her to make me a cloth one. So she used one of our kids' baby's blankets uh, and stitched it and uh, it was very thoughtful of her. But if you guys have any questions, uh, concerns, uh, you want to talk about something else regarding the health, uh, shoot me a comment and uh, be safe out there, guys. Thank you.